Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to our coverage of the 2023 Serials event. As ever, we're here to check out some of the latest machinery and technology. And I'll tell you what, to kick off with, we couldn't ignore this beast on the John Deere stand. Now it is an 8RX, we've seen them before, but there's something very, very different with this 8RX, isn't there? And it relates to the transmission. So I've got Thomas Lloyd here from John Deere. He's going to tell me about this tractor and what's in there in the middle of it, basically. So, Thomas, what is this? Uh, so this is the ARX 410, now available with an E-Auto power transmission. So previously on the 410 model, we weren't able to get an IVT transmission on the 410, so you had to go E23. Uh, but now with the introduction of the E-Auto power, we're able to get a full IVT transmission. Uh, and obviously all the benefits of that with Command Pro joystick and all that. Uh, on the largest ARX model. Right. Uh, and then the key kind of interesting thing about this is obviously uh, there's no hydro in the transmission. No, this isn't no. hydraulics and gears or anything like no, that. None of that. So what is involved on an E-Auto power? So in there we've got two motors. So then you've got the engine powering one motor, yeah. charging the other. So it's like generating electricity to charge the other motor. And then- So you've got a big generator, Yeah, basically, basically yeah. yeah. And then where the hydrostat would vary the ratio coming out of the transmission previously, the motor does that now. Right, so and that's got, just a big single electric just, motor. Yeah, just a sealed unit, non-serviceable, easy, nothing, highly reliable. One moving part. Yeah, one moving <laughs> part. Nice and easy, yeah. nice and simple. Much, much quieter as well. Yeah. yeah. And then you really do feel it when you're in the cab as yeah. well, you know, it's a big, big step up in terms of cab And climates. that electric motor, that is then just fastened to the final drive of the tractor as normal in the final drive, back end and all that, that is the same yeah. as yeah. it would be with a normal auto power. Uh, well, there is one difference right. in that you can get an offboarding plug. So there's an option to have an offboarding plug and then you can offboard electric power to an implement. So for example, you can get a driven axle, electric driven axle on yeah. a slurry tanker, for example, or in the future, as this kind of technology develops, we'll be able to get hopefully electric fans on drills and stuff like that. So you could power certain elements of yeah. and implement them back. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that'll be an option that in terms of having this offboard power. Yeah. And yeah. that's just using spare power that the, yeah. the yeah. engine and the first yeah, motor exactly. effectively yeah. is generating. Yeah. So you can offboard hundred kilowatts, uh, that's kind of surplus of what's left over after right. the tractor's done with it. In the future, obviously, as this we progress more and more, yeah. manufacturers will hopefully start replacing hydraulic motors with electric motors. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's less to go wrong then, isn't there? And right. it's easier. Um, yeah, another key thing with this tractor is under 5K, it's mostly electric drive. Uh, so it's, yeah, very, very quiet. Uh, obviously, pretty groundbreaking. There's nothing yeah. else like this on the market, is there? Right. Um, and when you say under 5K, and it's mostly electric drive. What do you sort of yeah. mean by that? So most of the like the ratio coming out the back of the transmission is driven by the electric motor. So like as it increases speed, it goes more mechanical. Yeah, more mechanical. Right, so, so a bit like a hydrostatic. Yeah, or very like similar that. to a hydrostatic. You get that sort of crossover yeah. point. Yeah. Right, got you. So. And you mentioned with this this transmission, this e auto power. Yeah. There's far far less moving parts in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to service it? No, nope, non-serviceable. That's it, you just leave yeah. it? Well, you've got obviously the oil in the transmission, yeah. other than that, yeah. The back end bit, yeah. yeah. You've you'll still never, got oil there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the actual You'll never have to go bit. in yeah. to service your hydrostat. Obviously, hydrostat is technically not a wearing part, but it is a wearing part in a way, yeah. isn't it? It's still um, a mechanical part, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's got none of that. And then, I mean, at the moment, it's kind of early stages in terms of using electrical power to drive machines like this yeah yeah because this is effectively you're only replacing the transmission at this stage yeah. with this but can you see in the future where you might have an electric motor on each wheel you know something like that you could really play around with power distribution that sort of stuff uh potentially yeah i mean the limitation at the minute is obviously battery uh power battery life yeah uh, in the future you could potentially see that obviously <laughs> I don't think we're going to be seeing the end of diesel anytime soon yeah. on tractors, but uh, potentially but in the future. But even still having the diesel power, you yeah. could power oh, individual off motors. Yeah, it to the axles. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I imagine, yeah, that's definitely an option, isn't right. it, in the future for development. So in terms of the skills. concept of this, this is effectively technology we've seen diesel electric trains. Yeah, 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 very, very similar. Yeah, right. so it's been present on the John Deere wheel loaders and stuff for a few years, uh, and then that's where it's kind of carried over from. And at the moment, it's only on the 410, is it, on the... Uh, 410 or can so you get it on other models or? Currently for this model year it's available on the 410 uh, and then for model year 24 uh, it'll be available on the 370 as well. Right. So it'll work its way down to the 370 for next year. Well Thomas thank you very much for your time. It's been thank absolutely you. Spot on, huh? No worries. Cheers. Thank you. So ladies
ladies and gents, we now move on to the Lemkin staff here at the Cereals event. Hopefully you can still hear me over the commentary of the Sprays and Spray Arena. And I'm now joined by Mr. Paul Creasy, General Manager of Lemkin UK, who's going to talk us round one of your latest developments. So, Paul, first of yeah. all, I mean, obviously it's a drill, but what is, what is it, what model is it? Right, so James, Solid Air DT, trail drill, brand new drill for the Lemkin, Lemkin range. Right. So, uh, trail machine, four and six metre working width to start with. Um, so, we've never had in the UK, or from Lemkin, a trailed Mintil style uh, drill four meter folding. Have you not? No, no, we've had a four meter rigid, but never a trail four meter folding. Right. So, this is a, a new sort of market for us, so yeah. the trail drills, sort of, yeah, trail drill sector, and yeah, proving quite popular. Yeah. So, yeah, really. So, there was some demand for it. Yeah, no, there still is. I mean, we thought we've always had a six meter trailed folding, sort of again, yeah, for a mint hill style, and we always thought that, yeah, you know, Mr. Farmer's moving to six, maybe eight, maybe nine. Yeah. Uh, and that the four metre job was nearly was nearly sort of done, but no, there, there seems to be demand in certain parts of the country that still a, a high output, sort of high forward speed, less width, yeah, more turns at the end. But that's what Mr. Farmer wants. He suits the particular scenario. Suits the style. He, you know, he wants to be in control of the drilling. Happy days. And that's it. And the horsepower that they've got available as well fits in. And, and, the, and the, you know, some of them may be able to pull a six, but not quite quick enough. And a, and a, Especially when you turn that disc yeah, exactly. as well. A, a, a style of drill like this wants a bit of speed and yeah. sort of. For the double disc culture at the back that we'll take a look at in a minute it needs a bit of speed to be working yeah. just to do the job and get seed covered and get that That's seed it. so so front end of the drill james obviously yeah. preparing the soil um again new for lemkin really so front front in front of the cultivating discs we now have three options we do nothing at all uh, we have a set of depth wheels certainly on the six meter machine just to keep the corners yeah. right we can do that we have a leveling board uh, again full width six or the four meter or now as something brand new for us is we can offer a tyre packer roller. Right. So we can have a full width tyre packer roller in the front depending on what and you're doing. And you've not doing. done that before, have No, 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 no. that's new for right. us. So, so that's, you know, again, that for us is something where, yeah, Mr. Farmer was saying, trail drills chaps, yeah. if, we're on, if we're on loose ground, ploughed ground, we need a bit of consolidation up front. We don't need to level, we've done that already. Yeah. But if we're, if we're ploughing and pressing and we're using this trail drill, we just want to consolidate in front so she's nice and level into the discs after the tractor, if it's, a bit, it. if it's a bit soft. So cultivating discs, so, so yeah, pretty self-explanatory. They're the same discs from our Heliodor disc harrow. Yeah, but we know they work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what we also offer now is we also offer a straight wavy disc. Right. So, so low disturbance. Just giving it a tickle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sort of low disturbance systems. Perhaps we've got a bit of trash. Uh, perhaps we're working through a sprayed off or, or grazed off cover crop from autumn to spring. Um, but, it, but yeah, so we can run. And that's, to be honest, that's what we're probably talking to most UK customers about, is to actually put the wavy style disc in. Right. And what's that? Just top 20 mil? So she's, yeah, so literally sort of in the ground 20, perhaps 30 mil deep, yeah. just literally making a groove not disturbing any soil and then those wavy discs run in line with the disc coulter at the back yeah. so it just, just enough yeah it just gives that disc coulter something to work into yeah. it has literally created a band of tilth that when that disc coulter gets to it it's disc is in the ground at the precise depth seed in pressed in happy days so yeah You'll also see in the middle here on this one, again, if we're in plough ground, we've got adjustment on the discs behind the wheels. Right. So again, so so, bit deeper, yeah, so right. behind, if, if, if we're on a min till situation with perhaps a paddle board or something, we don't have to put the whole thing in to take the tractor wheeling out. We can just put in what we need Where to. You need it. So yeah, and again, you can opt. If you've got 900 tyres, you can put in enough of those to cover 900. And is that better than having like track eradicators? Well, we think so, yeah. but it's, yeah. <laughs> this is your take Horses on that. for courses, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And these are all individual. Individually, individually sprung. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're obviously right. that's that's the Lemkin way with any of our disc harrows. One spring, one disc. We yeah. don't run tandem arms. Not pairs or anything no. like that. And also, one affects the other. And yeah, and we always we always like to get the leaf out of the way of the of the of the coal face. Get it around the back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people may say to us, "Well, your disc harrow is a little bit more money than Mr. X's," but well, has he cracked that spring around yeah. the back of the disc? Because we've got all that in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's the cultivating yeah. section. We sort of then start to get to the drill. We just have a quick look up at the tank. So this is a this is a, 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 a twin tank system. So so grain and fertilizer or two seeds, however we want to do it. 
So, um, okay. so we have two options of uh, two options of tank size. If she was a grain only at four meters, she'd be four thousand kilos. Yeah. Uh, and then if we go up to the the grain and fur or the six meter machine, uh, we go up to the five thousand liter or five thousand one hundred liter tank. Right. Um, so four thousand liter. Yeah. Yeah. So four thousand. Right, yeah. And again, the the, the 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 you know what our dealers are talking to us about. What Mr. Customer is wanting is twin tank. Is, yeah. is, is grain and fertilizer or two seeds? Like, pretty, not, pretty standard thing. These it days, seems to be yeah. on a trail machine now you've got to have at least two tanks if not three uh, right. and we can we can and we will be able to encompass a third tank in 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 time so that's that's the tanks yeah. um yeah obviously we meter out the bottom and this machine we're metering whether it's two seeds or grain and furt and we're metering everything into one pipe so it's what we would call like a single shot system so yeah. everything ends up mixed so if it's grain and fertilizer everything is mixed to the coulter bar to the heads into the coulter right. we can also and that's why james I was say, yeah, there's you... a gap in here yeah. so we could run and we don't tend to see it in the uk or ireland very often we can run a fertilizer bar so you basically have discs spaced along it looks exactly the same a double disc coulter uh, and they're spaced they work with three uh, on the 167 space coulter bar one fertilizer disc works in tandem with a pair of seeding discs. so that'd be in between yeah so pair, so right. in here we'd have a row of discs and fertilizer would be distributed out and then we'd have distribution heads here so we can do that um, but we tend to find in the UK not not a big not a popular yeah, option we, we mostly mix do it yeah we tend to and shove it to the back so tire packer in the middle pretty self-explanatory yeah. staggered uh, each each wheel covers three coulters on the 167 and four on the 125 space coulter uh, we then have the little trapeze packer roller in the I was middle. Say, this is a bit yeah, extra, isn't it? so she's it's an option. This is a very Lemkin thing oh, to do. This, isn't absolutely. It? Well, the trapeze packer, you know, I've grown up with a trapeze packer roller at Lemkin, and you know, we would always advise to Mr. Farmer that trapeze packer roller is what makes the disc coulter work. Whether it's on a combi drill with a power harrow, whether it's on a trail machine, again, if if again in the low disturbance system, the wavy disc has done its job. The trapeze packer is just making that consolidation, and then the, then the it all adds up. Uh, it it yeah. works, but it's an option. Again, you know, a lot of our competitors don't offer a roller in here no so so if mr farmer says look i've been running a such and such and I, I, it's not something i'm interested in fine we take it out yeah if he's a lemkin man and he's been running lemkin yeah. drills and he knows, he knows. Them, he'll be like yeah <laughs> give me give me the option again it's all all operated from the cab it lifts it lowers there's no extra spool valve you're not sitting on you know you're not not having to press a lot of buttons and we can up we can adjust the pressure of that roller as well right. so depending on the situation we can ramp the pressure up or drop it away and then the cultivar james is our well-known opti disc cultivar so we'd run this on the solitaire 25 uh, we run it on our six meter combi with the front tank um, so opti disc coulter bar uh, 125 spaced or 167 spaced uh, widths this is the 167 again we tend to find in the UK that 167 is the preferred option um, we also find at 167 there's a little bit more space if we're starting to talk about mechanical weeding of cereals so that's interesting um, and then there's two options you either have opti disc H or M right hydraulic or manual or mechanical this is the H because this top round bar is, is actually full of oil. So that's got hydraulic oil in it. And then we can pressure up the coulter bar hydraulically. And again, right. surprise, surprise, from the cab, from the control box, yeah. we can adjust that pressure. And then if it was, a, if it was an OptiDisc uh, M, doesn't have the oil reservoir, and we, 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 we ramp up the pressure yeah. mechanically uh, on springs. Press roller at the back. Uh, again, obviously, that's what tucks that seed in. That's, again, that's the Lemkin way of drilling. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, an option of following harrows at the back if you if you want them. So um, so that, in a nutshell, James that's the DT it's yes yeah, an exciting product for us we're really sort of you know getting our teeth into it this autumn yeah. we've got machines out and about we've got machines sold uh, we've got yeah demo demo fleet this autumn in sort of four and six meter form and looking forward to getting them out there good All stuff good. excellent right. nice one Paul thank you very much James. well done perfect nice right ladies and gents there are many sprayers at this year's Serial 2023 event. Unfortunately, we can't get around them all, but we have spied this one, the new trail sprayer from Hardy. And to tell us all about it, we've got Mr. Peter Wiles here. Uh, so, Peter, for a start off, what model is this one? Sort of where does it sort of kind of sit in the family? So this is the, the Hardy Aeon Centura line. It's the new sprayer from Hardy. Uh, it sits as the top model within the Hardy world of trailed. Uh, so we have the Navigator, Commander, then the Aeon. But the Aeon is completely new. Centura line is the model specification. Right, so you do various specs of the Aeon, do you? We do three. So we do right. a base model, a titanium line, and then a Centura line. 
Centura line, literally, the only option as a sales guy we have is how wide do you want your tyres? And what sort of capacities are available in the Aeon family? So we've got a 4.2, 4,200 litre. We've then got a 5,200 litre. And at Lama, this coming year, 2024, we'll go to a 7,000 litre. Really? We've got one on order, so yeah, ready for that. So then, just kind of run us through the machine then. What's, what's the Aeon made up of? What have you got going on with it? So principally, the Aeon, we've gone to an axle steered system, a wheel steered system. So we can fold with the booms folded. We can fold, sorry, we can steer with the booms folded. One of the unique things we have over everyone else, our mudguard steer with the wheels. They go with it. Such a novel idea. But yeah, it just stops Keeps a lot of a lot cleaner, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Stops a lot of dirt from coming up. Yeah. Predominantly that's what the whole of the Aeon is built around, the, the steering, um, the steering axle. Yeah. So you started here. Started here. Put everything around. It, right? Fancy new tank. Fancy new in what we call the work zone. We have a remote operated fluid system. So from here, you can select auto fill and auto wash you can tell it exactly what you want to put into the tank if you don't know what you want to put into the tank for the area that you're covering you can type in your liters per hectare your hectares you're covering and the rest all, machine does it it for you. all of the fluid system is on the opposite side under what we call the tech zone under another cover so there's no fluid on this side other than your fill and empty connections from what sort of size is your induction off with a 35 litre, um, it's what we call a turbo filler. So Sounds rapid. <laughs> it is. It'll suck 120 litres per minute. With the turbo deflector plate at the bottom, we inject water onto it and we create a swirl, almost like a turbo. Right. If you've got powders or granules, you can literally put them up to there. Because of the vortex action underneath, you'll literally just see them going down. Pre-mix. And that, that's maintains. kind of drawing it out, is it? Yeah. Right. But right. that will suck up to 120 litres per minute. <laughs> so literally as fast as yeah. you're tipping it in, <laughs> it's gone. We've then got the Twin Force Boom. So it's a Learap three-star rated boom. It's the only machine on the market that's Learap three-star rated. Right. Benefits of the Twin Force Boom, it's an air assistance boom. So it reduces drift pre primarily, it reduces drift. So we have air meeting the nozzle around about there. It entrains the fluid into the crop. So your nozzle's there in front, air's coming in just behind, is it? Just yeah. behind? Yeah. And it meets at about 22 centimetres. Right. Uh, which is about where the droplets are formed. So from a standard nozzle, you get a sheet of water, which around about 22 centimetres below the outlet, that's where it actually turns into a, a droplet. Yeah. That's where the air meets. We can angle the um, air and the nozzles forward to open the cop, crop, to allow us to get our chemical into the base of the crop and to target the area we need. One of the benefits, because it's three-star Learap rated, we can use a fine nozzle on windy conditions and reduce drift. Right. So uh, two, three years ago, we did some research with the Met Office with a standard flat fan nozzle and a standard boom, in spring 2015, there was something like 91, 92 days in spring. Using a standard boom, you could only spray something like 30 days at four meters a second wind speed. Using a twin force, you could spray up to eight meters a second with less drift, and you could spray for 72 days that. of that 90 day period. Yeah which then means you can spray when you need to spray yeah, and rather when it's than ready as well, yeah. yeah. And you can preset it, so if you're going into the wind, you can set your angle further forward. If you're coming away from the wind, you can set it backwards. So again, just right. put in the droplets and where you well want it. And as well as counteracting the wind conditions, you know, you know, if you are trying to push into it or coming away from it or whatever, is there any other benefits to being able to alter that angle? Are there any other scenario or situations you'd want to do that as well? So yeah, when you're spraying cereal crops, if you've got things like black grass, a very fine target, you can use fine droplets. You've got a better chance of hitting the target because the wind is moving the, the, the not the crop, but moving the weeds around. 
So you're going to get very good coverage yeah. on that black grass. Right. And hopefully much better results. Kind of making them a bigger target for themselves. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, and then you'd sort of boom size, boom width, what can we go so through on this? Uh, on the twin force we start at 20 metres and we can go up to 36 metres. Right. Um, it's a two-fold boom on a 5,200 litre, yeah sorry we can go up to 30 metres on a 4,200 and a 5,200 we can go up to 36 metres in the twin. A conventional boom we can go up to 39 metres on both. And then in terms of your, your boom suspension and your linkage, what have we got going on here? So we've got a power lift system, um, a suspended power lift system. So we've got nitrogen accumulators on there to offer suspension. We've got a pendulum design. So it's a friction free center frame. Literally the boom is suspended directly off of four link arms, two at the top and two at the bottom. Onto that, we've got a auto terrain boom management system. So it's a five sensor system where we're sending an ultrasonic sensor uh, or an ultrasonic um, sound to the floor, yeah. waiting for it to come back. And that's doing our complete boom lift and lower, boom tilt and your variable geometry. So it will All right. always follow the train. So you can really get some good contour following with this. You can. Right. Well, Peter, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank Been you. Absolutely cracking as that. Good to see uh, your machines out and about. Brilliant. Thank you. So ladies and gents, we continue and we now find ourselves on the KSAH stand at Serials uh, 2023. I'm joined by Mr. Ross McDonnell, who has, well, a bit of a beast of a development in the form of the new Optum 340. So, Optum yeah. 340, what have you done to it? Um, well, when we six months ago met each other at Lama Show, mm -hmm. um, we were looking at the new that 260. That one there, the new 260, yeah. Um, and with the introduction of that 260, um, we've taken the opportunity to remove the 250 Optum out of the range because that's nibbling at its heels. That's yeah. going to be taking over um, all of the volumes. Yeah. So we've still got the 270, we've still got the 300, um, but in parallel with that, last year we stopped offering the 280 Magnum and 310 Magnum in Europe. Right. So we've kind of shuffled things I was going to say, the other all way. the ranges are sort of just growing up a yeah. little bit, aren't they? I mean, as they've done over time anyway, but yeah. this is the latest to do. So that, uh, the 340 comes in top model in the Optum range, um, kind of bridging that gap into the Magnum. Um, what we're getting is a lot of call for more versatility from, from farmers, customers, yeah. um, because the Magnum, longer wheelbase, it's a heavy draft tractor. It's, you know, in the shed, seven, eight, nine yeah. months of the year. So we get a lot more versatility with this, being able to throw the weight on, take it off, um, so it can still do the heavy draft work. It's a good grunt uh, with the power in the engine, but yeah, if we want to fly up and down the road with some grain trailers or whatever it might be, you know, there's, it there's a lot more. It won't be out of place around. for that, yeah. in terms of its, you know, its stature and its size. That's it. Yeah. So, to get to the 340, we've still got the same engine. James, we've still got the, the FPT 6.7. Um, but is yeah. that on its limit now in this? It's, it's, it's getting fairly to the top. pushing it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's getting to the top there now. Yeah. Um, we have gone a bit further than 340 um, without any disasters. For us, with the torque and things we needed, um, we've gone bigger intercooler. Um, we've gone bigger cylinder head, get more pressure in there. Um, and through the drive line, um, the hydro has been beefed up, the gears, the bearings the clutch packs and the PTO, everything really has just been yeah. beefed up really. Um, so more the, power, more cooling, more beef, that'll, that'll basically. Do. That'll you do can it. have that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we are with uh, with the new 340. So this is the first time um, it's been shown. Yeah. Um, we normally would do something like Agri-Technica. Mm. Um, with COVID, there's been a lot of knock-on effects about getting things done. So actually this has come right in the middle of the year and it was like, yeah. okay, we can actually run it now. We can demo it now. We've got one in the field at the back. Um, so Serials was chosen to uh, 
to be the first showing in, well, in Europe, in the world, actually. Right, so this is its world this premiere is, this is it. today, yeah. this week? Today, right. yeah. And then in terms of the rest of the tractor, is that all the same? Um, with the 300 that we looked at together last year, yes, pretty much. There's a couple of little updates, you know, when we do a manufacture year mm. 2024. So there's a bit of aesthetics on the rear with some new covers. Um, there's the new TIM, so the Tractor Implement Management, you know, yeah. Isobus Class 3 plus plus plus. Um, and also we've got the new um, semi-active hydraulic suspension as well um, that's that's come on these, so it's on this version as well. Right. So there's a couple of little bits and pieces, yeah. but mostly it's the model um, yeah. and the more, more power, curled. more beef, more, <laughs> more cooling. cooling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, spot on. And then like things like torque characteristics and things like that—is that altered with this? You know, more power yeah, so or what's three, that look like? The 340. Quite often with us, the number on the bonnet is the sort of minimum that we get. Yeah. This is actually this. This is it. It's 340. So, at about 17, 1800 revs. Um, you have a completely flat power torque curve at 340 right through to max. Yeah. So that's it's just a completely flat curve in there. Um, so yeah, no boost or growth or anything on this one. It's just 340 all day long. That is what you what you see is what you get on this. It is on this one for a change with there us. Yeah, yeah. It's usually the little farm walls that uh, <laughs> only do what they say on the tin. But uh, yeah, we we're uh, excited to get them in the field this summer. We've got half a dozen, I think, in the country now. So yeah, should be getting them out in the next month or well, two. Well, put his name down. Yeah, we'll be keen. We'll be keen to have a look. I mean, we've got to do the two sixty first, so we'll try and get through them. But we'll get to this at some point as well. So. Yeah, brilliant, good stuff, Ross. Nice as to ever. see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, ladies and gents, we now move on to the Coon Stand at Serials Twenty Twenty Three, and I'm now joined by Ed Fanshaw. Is going to talk through his, their latest development in uh, seeding technology, particularly with this Prolander machine we see behind us. So, Ed, for those that don't know, just yep. talk us through the Prolander and what you've got in the range. Yep, so this is our um, light stubble cultivator, Spring Tine, um, fitted with this one is a six meter machine, five rows of Spring S Tines, uh, 70 by 12 mil Tines. Uh, we now do a 90 by 13 mil for slightly heavier duty work. Um, for the width, we do uh, four to six in the mounted range. Um, and then if we move to the trailed range, we go six up to 14 meters. Um, so you can get a fair old size on this thing. Yes, yeah, yeah the 14 meters are coming next year. So yeah, um, yeah we've really expanded the range to, to target the XXL farmers. Um, so it's a very versatile machine, which is we've uh, improved this year with the addition of a distribution head. Right. So we've got a, a manual basic distribution head on there with manual valves for shutoffs. Um, there's no electronics on it. Um, so we've got two options. And on the, this one here, we've, uh, we're seeding behind the tine. Um, we can also do a splash paint behind the roller. Okay. Um, to allow for a bit of versatility there. Yeah. Um, as I say, we've got different choice of tines. Um, then also with the points, we've got a standard reversible share there, or we can do a goose foot share, um, also in carbide. Right, so there's a fair bit of different spec, yes. very spec you can do, do with this then? Yeah, yeah, and w we see this as a drill that people use as, not just for cereals, or cover crops, uh, rape. Um, as I say, it's, with this machine here, it's 15 and a half centimetre spacing. So I was saying you get a lot of trash through there, couldn't you? Yeah, it's got good, yeah. good trash throw. So how many rows are we talking on this This has got one? five rows. Right, this is yeah. five rows on this, this one. This is th 39 times on this six metre machine. Right. And what sort of power requirement are we talking for something like this? Uh, about 250 horsepower, something like this. Yeah. Um, depending on how deep you want to work. Um, if, you, if you've got your goose fizz on and you, you're just scalping the top, you'll get away with the high 180s, 200s. Right. Yeah. Got you. And we see it here. You've got your TF yep. tank hopper. Here, because you use other hoppers, or have you got various options in terms of hoppers and things this like that? Is, this is our only hopper we offer at the moment. Um, so this is a 1500 litre hopper. Um, this is the only so you'd have this front mounted and then... This front mounted, there. yeah, and then tubed across the draw bar there, down the side of the tractor. Right. Um, There's no option for like a frame yet under there where you put it on the back and then hook up to the... No, no not, not yet. Not currently, it's just front right. mounted at the moment. Something to think about, is Yes, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's on the list. One day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And in terms of depth control across the... You know, the width and fore and after yep. machine. So you're on your depth control wheels at the front here and also on your, your rear packer roller. 
Right. And have we got a choice of pack of rollers at the back and things uh, like just, that? Uh, just the W. Uh, and is this, with this uh, distribution head on it, this is available now, is it? This, this is available now as a kit. Um, so you can either order with, with the machine or retrofitable as well um, on our six metre machines, seven and a half metre machines. Not currently available on the 14 metre. Uh, Not yet. <laughs> no. Need a couple of heads on that. Yeah, you might need more than one, yeah. Well, spot on, Ed. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Perfect. and lasses shall we have a bit of chat about the Cummings powered agri buggy I think so from McConnell so we've got Mr John Davis who is going to give us a little tour of his little beast so John where should we start over to you so to start with we'll go to the power unit everybody likes Cummings we can see you like Cummings because, yeah. because of your hat so <laughs> and underneath the guards we've got 148 horsepower stage 5 Cummings um, she's 600 newton meters at 1150 it's only a little four cylinder 3.8 but she's got plenty of poke she's feisty she is very feisty and all the customers you've got have said as soon as you touch the throttle you know it's like yeah. it's all go everything's there it's got a good response to it <laughs> characteristics <laughs> it's got, it's got, yeah. it'll certainly pull you up any any hill this is the only side which we can get into the other side's got the dpf dpf on so we call that the hot side this the cold side so you've got your ad blue your diesel Diesel, diesel filter, engine oil filter, secondary fuel filter, dipstick and air filter, engine fuse box, all right there. So pretty much for your daily checks, ev every, it's all there. Ev uh... Yeah, everything's there, even and your air filter. The, yeah. o the only one which isn't here is on the other side, which is the which is the coolant, but there's a little gauge on the other oh, okay. side just for seeing. Right. But it's, you know, everything's there. Yeah, cool stuff. And how long have you been using Cummings power now? We've been using Cummings since, 2014 uh, the a280 had a 2.8 148 horsepower in yeah but that was a commercial engine which used to come from china okay yeah. but this one uh this one produced in darlington i was gonna say this will be a darlington built this is a darlington yeah. one which does make life a little bit easier yeah. at times rather than it being in china locally sourced <laughs> lo lo locally sourced locally sourced yeah. and it makes it easier for the customers because if they want any components you know it's, it's also quicker for them to get it yeah but the last, the last one was a commercial engine, so that was used in some pickups and some coaches, some buses, whereas this one's an industrial engine, so hence it's revving, a lot lower revving, but a lot higher torque and a lot higher peak. Right, power. got it, it's a bit more heavy duty tune. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. So off the back of that, we've then got a ZF4HP24 uh, four-speed auto gearbox. Um, so basically on the road you drive it like an automatic car yeah, you've, got, you've got a foot throttle rev brake so rev off you go simple as that yeah. it looks after it looks after itself four speed forward one speed re re yeah. simple. simple then off the back of that we've got a, we've got a transfer box with a differential in so you can lock you can lock it up to drive obviously um, all four um, so you've got high low splitter so on the road she's 50k in the field put it into low and then you're zero up to 18. Which is plenty enough. Yeah, you know, plenty it's enough. Kind of like sticking Gen to that field more. Than, yeah, 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 yeah. Generally for spraying, you'd only be up to ideally around 12, 13k. And right. 12k is the ideal. If you, you can push on a little bit, but only when it's like going good. Yeah, otherwise, when it's a good spray it's, there, when it's, it's perfect. Too, yeah. It's too rough. It bounces the booms, and you're you're all over the yeah. place. From that from that transfer box, we're shaft drive straight down to the to the axles. Five ton um, carrying capacity on the axles. Um, simple enough open differential on the front limited slip differential on the rear um, on the front box we have got a little offset gearbox as well it's not your totally conventional axle so just on just on the diff there you can see now that there's a trans there's a not a transfer box sorry there's an offset gearbox because what we've got is where the transfer box sits the shaft drive coming down to it um, it actually it would actually go through your precious Cummins engine yeah. if it was to go if it was to go straight to <laughs> so the you want to divert it a little bit yeah so to be fair to Omsi they were they were really good at working with us on the, on this project so yeah. they actually built us a custom made offset gearbox to get around the right. uh, to get so around it's all the Omsi axles on yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and having this this uh, sort of like drive line 
actually a proper mechanical drive to your yep. to your axles. That must be quite a good selling point for it's you the, guys. It's the only one. Yeah, it's the only pure mechanical drive self-propelled sprayer that was that is left yeah. on the market, which keeps it also lightweight. So that's the two USPs. It's a lightweight as it sits here with its fluids in, not without without any water in. It sits at 5,450 kilos on these 540 tires. Fully loaded, it'll be 8,750. Mm. So you've 3,000 litres of water in the tank, 320 litres of water in the clean water tank. Um, so it's the lightest. I guess it's still on the treading fairly and, lightly when and, she's full. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. When she's full, she's still lighter than some of the sprayers which are over there. Yeah. But the agri buggy, to be fair, it's got a strong following. It's the people that drive them, they're, they're almost agri buggy enthusiasts. Yeah. They, they it's just, got a cult following, haven't they, it? They just love yeah. them. They just love them. Started, started off in Yorkshire, moved down to Gloucestershire. They just they do, they just love them. Yeah. They just love them. And they want to see the agri buggy name on it. You know, that's that's what it is, because it's synonymous with that lightweight, that lightweight spray. That's it. We try and stick to 24. We can go up to 28 if possible, but 3,000 litre, 24 metre, the model you see, just, there it is. Yeah. That's it. That is that legendary package, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. been there. That's what it is. Spot on. Right, shall we continue our little tour, John? Well, we haven't got... What, we, what we, haven't, we got next? We haven't moved yet. We haven't, we haven't <laughs> got too much more to do. We, again, we try and keep it simple on the side. So you've got two taps. You've got one for suction, one for pressure. We'll keep it easy. When you're washing, the taps are in the same position to just to make it simple. Suck it from your clean water tank, going through your rinsing nozzles. When you're spraying, taps are in the same position sucking from your main main water tank and go into the booms and when you're inducting i won't spin it around but when you're inducting you've got the one that comes down sucking from your external fill and the one which goes off to your induction hopper the only time they're different is when once you've put all your chemical in then you spin it around and then it's just a direct dump yeah. straight into the tank simple got you Flotation tyres, anything from a 540 up to a 600, 28, so we can go that little bit wider and that little bit taller on the floats. Uh, row crops from 11.2, um, 36, going out to a 12.4, 13.6, and then going up to a 42 inch tyre. So maximum clearance you'll get. It's the one thing which some people do say, well, it's it's down for mm. because you've got that mechanical axle there yeah is the clearance but on the tallest tire we get up to about 750 mil which isn't plenty enough for cereals yeah so yes you will on rape you'll be just pushing that bit of rape over but once obviously you've pushed rape over as long as you always spray it in the same direction it's always going to continue to grow in that it's when you drop that's when you go the other way and start when snagging it back the other way and they drag and they drag it off yeah. the other way yeah exactly exactly so top tip make sure you go the same way correct so the rest of that is all is all pretty simple that's your self fill that's the fill point for your clean water tank the little lcd display on the side that is for your main uh, spray tank content so it comes up on air as it's filling up start and stop your pto increase decrease your speed it's dead simple. Everything is the operating area, so everything's there for you. Yeah. Nice little wash down lance on the side for people to keep them clean. Obviously, the number plate's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not legit. She's not registered for the road. Uh, not too much back here. Uh, you've got 300. You'll see a bit of fortune for that. <laughs> <laughs> you would if it had to be registered. Yeah. You've got a 335 litre a minute pump, um, your five cylinder Imavili, you've got your suction filter, your pressure filter, and your agitation tap. That's pretty much it at the back. It's dead simple. Um, on the back frame, this one, we have changed it a little bit since this model, because this one's about 18 months old. Right. Uh, so we've, done, we've changed this, these white boxes here now to some, uh, to some ECUs, some different ECUs, but it's, it's, there's nothing to it. You've got a simple hydraulic block on the left, main spray control valve and regulation valve in the middle, a couple of ECUs above it, and your sprayer ECUs for control of the boom sections. You can go from seven, currently you can go from seven up to 15 sections, all recirculation, uh, purge and primed, um, air shut off, triple nozzle bodies or five-way nozzle body. There's nothing too complex about mm. it. And we're just about to bring out a, um, an individual nozzle body shut off. Lots of other manufacturers have got it. 
we've been a little bit behind yeah. on that one, but we've just got cap we've just got caught up on it, so we will have individual shuts off on it as well. Round on the side, because it is still a D-mount, so you can take the spray tank off if you want, and you can put a fertilizer spreader mm. on the back. It's a little bit nicer stood this side as well. Do you get many people? Because well, I am stood in the shade. <laughs> Do you get many people using it as a, there are know, still a full a few. on D-mount job? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are still a few. There are still a few. There's a few customers out there who will, they'll they'll buy an, an older machine, mm. and they'll almost do away with the sprayer yeah and they'll just, just put the fur spinner on just it. have yeah. the fur spinner on the back yeah, yeah 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 so but we've got the connection points down the side all your hydraulics your air your ice your ice bus your electrics everything everything's there dead simple click away you go put the fertilizer d mac frame on connect it up got to go away you go simple it just makes use of the self it just makes use oh, of the tractor unit you know that's that's exactly what it's there for yeah and there's some there's there's a couple out there have even put little cranes on the back yeah so you can have your fur spreader yeah, back exactly. here. Yeah, exactly. Little uh, crane in the middle. Comes along, picks, picks your bag up, lift it up, dump it in. Job, job done. <laughs> Happy days, eh? Well, it's, it just makes life easy. <laughs> exactly, it just makes life easy. As I say, this is so this is the DPF side. We can't open this side because it's bolted. We, mm. don't, we don't want customers going in there. DPFs do get hot. This one runs at just over 750 degrees. Leave it's, it alone. It's, yeah, it's not somewhere where you want people to be touching, really. It kind of takes the skin off your hands and stuff, so it's all it's all locked nicely away. Um, exhaust up through, and as I say, that's the only only check, really, which you have to do oh, this, this side, side because, yeah. because you've got the coolant gauge there yeah. for, the, the, uh, for the Cummins engine. That's it. Two storage lockers, battery this side, nothing else apart from hydraulic tank slung under the front. Job done. You come back round to this corner. That's it. And there you go. Simple enough cab, 65 degree access, steps come up on, a, on an air ram, away you go. Everything's in there that you need, it's got all the, all the mod cons in it, as you get with any modern day yeah. piece of agri agricultural equipment. And that's your own cab that is? Yeah, 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 yeah it's, our own, own it's our own yeah. cab, yeah, 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 it's our own cab, we manufacture it ourselves. Um, they always come with um, auto section control, the stand, obviously, as everybody wants today, but the good thing is what for other self propelleds around this size is what customers like is that yes you've got a throttle pedal there but you've also got a brake pedal mm -hmm. you get into a hydrostat machine not all of them have got that brake no. pedal and when you're pulling up to the traffic lights you're pulling back on the stick you just, they just want that little just bit of extra nice to have that confidence yeah. to know you oh. know it's going to really stop if we have to correct <laughs> correct <laughs> correct and with the coming side we also link it in now because this one also has exhaust brakes really? so as soon as you take your foot off the throttle she properly exhaust brakes. Is that an auto exhaust brake? Auto exhaust brake. Is it? Right. Brake. That soon just, that soon just comes in as soon as you let off. As soon as you let off. And we give we give the operators a few options so you can the operators can go into the screen and they can change how effective it is. Yeah. Most people set it to the maximum. Full as, tilt. As they do. You take your foot off the throttle and then she really <laughs> starts, <laughs> and then she starts barking and yeah. slowing her down. And it's it's really effective as well. Oh, it's really it's, effective. We got that. Save your brakes, won't it? Precisely. Save a bit of wear and tear. Yeah. 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 And in the field as well. If you're going up and down, if you're going up and down hills yeah. in the field, as you're going downhill, it's it's slowing you down, so you don't get that runaway. Yeah, it just holds itself back a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool stuff. Well, John, thank you very much for your little whistle stop to it. You're very welcome. of the agri buggy. Good to see, you. and uh, yeah, we'll catch you again next time, hopefully. No worries. Cool stuff. Right, boys and girls, shall we have some Baylor chat? I think so. So we're on the New Orleans stand. We've got Mr. Sean Whittingham, who we've seen before when we did the uh, the Pro Belt yep. Brown Bailey video, the uh, the product focus piece. Go check it out if you've not seen it. Uh, but we're, uh, it's all about square bailers today, isn't it? Yes, So, right. Sean, talk us through this beast that you got behind us, but also give us a bit of a flavour of where you you guys are at, at yep. New Orleans, with your big square bailer That's range. That's fine, no problem. So. The big square baler range for us, we've got two ranges as such. We've got the big baler plus and the big baler high density. So this model behind us, we have the big baler high density, the crop cutter version. Um, but the plus range because has the 870, the 890, 1270 and 1290 model. Um, but this high density version is more of a contractor spec machine, mainly targeted towards the biomass industry to get them heavy bale weights right. in there. 
Um, so that's where this machine and comes into And what dimensions play. of bell do you do with this 120 one? 120 by 90. Right, so you so just do the one, one with size, this, but it's... That's it. Yeah. You've got two versions, the standard packer, yeah. and then the crop cutter version as well. So right, and you say this is a crop cutter, this one? Correct, yeah, yeah this is a right. chopper machine, yeah. Got you. So, okay. with this being a crop cutter, how many sort of knives in this 29, machine? 29. 29 knives on this machine, yeah. Right, and what yeah. sort of theoretical chop length on that? <sighs> Roughly around the... 30 to 40 mil. Yeah. Yeah. So got quite you. a short chop length, really. Right. There yeah. you go. So we've got the identity model yeah. behind you. Yeah. Three minutes front to back. No go. problem. Right. So come on, at Christopher. The here, dive in. We've got the Smart Shift gearbox. Yeah. So what that is, we've got a thousand speed PTO shaft coming in. We've got a two speed gearbox at the front here, which then increases the speed up into the flywheel to 1440 RPM. So everything's spinning a lot quicker, more momentum, more inertia, and more capacity yeah. at the end of the day. So when you fire that up for all the first time, all isobus yeah. controlled. So and will it sort of fire up in low gear and then change yeah, it? Yeah, correct. So kind of it starts right. off when you engage a PTO, you rev up to 800 RPM. She selects first gear. She starts spinning over real nice and slow. So there's no real stress or strain on the tractor's PTO clutch pack. Um, when she's happy, she'll say, "Do you want to engage Baylor? Click the green tick." She'll then start the cycle up to second gear and increase the revs up to 1,000 RPM. Then once she's happy, she'll be doing 1,440 out into the flywheel. Got to go. So everything's spinning quite quick, but yeah. um, it's mainly for the capacity and the throughput. And will this be a bigger, a bigger flywheel than the other, the other models? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything's a bit beefed up on yeah. this machine. Yeah. Got you. Cool stuff. So right. Down on Carry the bottom on. then, we've got the five time bar cam steered pickup. So the active, active sweep version. Um, Works really well with plastic time bands on the bottom there as well. So nice and quiet, smooth operation in the field. And that'll be a cam track pickup. Cam like track, it, yeah? yeah. So the benefit that we see over a over a camless reel is the the sweeping action of a cam track reel. Yeah. So we get better feeding, better presentation of the crop up into the rotor. Can you obviously. run it a bit slower as well with it being a cam? You can. Track. You can. Runs about 124 rpm. So it's ensuring we don't lose any crop behind and yeah. don't leave anything on the floor. So it all gets swept up into the, in, what up into the rotor. 2.35 metre. All oh, right, she's so generous then. A nice wide mouth, big yeah. spots. Yeah, she's happy. Big God, big, big appetite. Big appetite, Lovely. exactly, exactly. Right. So stuff. if we wander around to the side, uh, we've got the large rotor here, so you can appreciate the size. The design is a W pattern, so it'll try and even out the crop flow yeah. and then feed it in. So it's almost kind of push from the centre exactly. out. Exactly. Get, so the, get your hard shoulders. The sides. Yeah. Exactly. So your bale shape consistency is far superior to the competitors on the market. So you um, heard it here first, boys and girls. Yeah, exactly. There you and then back up. Sean knows his stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> back up into the stuffer here then. So we can control uh, the stuffer trip sensitivity here. So this is where your slice formation is made. And once that reaches a set tension as such, it'll trip. Feed that slice up into the chamber, and then obviously the plunger will then right. So you apply could, the density. can you then alter? Yes. So like your pre-density in that correct in that yeah. chamber. So there. on the far side of the baler, just on a handle with a spring, you can change from several notches. Um, normally default is the third notch. Yeah. Um, and then you just go from there, really, depending on the crop conditions, etc. You can adjust it on the go. Right. Just jump out, change it a little bit, and see how your bale is coming out if you're struggling with top fill etc you can then you know adjust it accordingly to get yeah. that bale shape and density right for for the conditions that's it so spot on yeah and then as you can appreciate the the twine boxes are hydraulically folding and we've also got hydraulic suspension so we can lift and lower the whole baler really? so we can fill the top yeah so yeah. for somebody short like me <laughs> we can actually reach the top and fill the spools up okay so you can drop this baler down and yeah. you'll be able to exactly go there 100 percent yeah no. so works That's really tough. well to be fair uh, on this baler as well we've got the option uh, going forward for model year 23 balers to have seven preset height settings so you've got a max and a min right. so your max could be just to get up in underneath maintenance yeah. you know restringing etc and then a min so it drops all the way down to to fill the the twine boxes and you've got five working modes right so um, all done through the screen yeah yeah really good really helpful really easy to use as well yeah so um, have you got a way of altering its height you know externally at all yeah yeah all right so, so it saves you jumping exactly back in. so we've got two taps 
right. one tap either side of the baler yeah. where you can jack them up or you know level them up you as lean well. It, you lean you it can. towards yeah, you. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can. Yeah. Right. And this this hydraulic, well, these rams that jack it up and lower it down. Yeah. Does that also work as its suspension as well? Or it does, it right? does, exactly. That's part so of that, it's very it? smooth riding in the field and on the road as well. Right, so that'll be like hydro pneumatic yeah, sort of suspension. Yeah, exactly, on this. exactly. Right. And obviously, we've got the steering axle on the rear as well, so yeah. less scrubbing on the headland, etc., while it's turning. So. Yeah. And how many balls of twine can you get in? 36. Right. So the plus range can carry 32, but the HD range can carry a bit more, 36, large yeah. spools as well. So we can get a, a good day and a half work really out of the baler before yeah. having to change and restring uh, spools together, etc. That's it. So if you come round to the rear, you'll see the density ring where we've got seven double acting cylinders where we can apply the force and the pressure so you've got onto th the base. Three at the top there, two the top. either side. Exactly. All pressing on that chamber. Correct, yeah. yeah. So that's where we're getting the density from really. Um, packing that weight in for the for the biomass boys really. That's it. Um, the magic number that we hear is the 550 kilo as an average. In um, straw that is. In yeah. straw, yeah. straw 550. Uh, but there's a customer on the stand earlier producing 860 kilo silage bales. Um, I was like, good on you. So um, know about them yeah. when he's wrapping. He up. would. He <laughs> would. Yeah. Exactly. So big bricks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've also got full. Full eject and partial eject of the bale chamber as well. So at the end of the day, if you want to clear it out, etc., you can pump it out via these external and can controls. Can you do weighing on, on this yeah. as well? Yeah. 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 So the rear segment, this part here, is the weighing section. Comes standard with a weigher from factory, so we don't have any without a weighing right. uh, section on the rear here. Yeah. So. And how accurate will that be? Very accurate to be fair. Software is loaded from the factory. We don't really we'll have to recalibrate it. No? Uh, not. It's, it worked really well, really well. Good stuff. Yeah. And then obviously, probably I haven't touched on it yet, but the main benefit to the New Holland balers is the Loop Master technology, the double knot uh, technology where we're not getting that off cut of twine on top of the bales. Mm. So no, you don't see those little that, exactly. bits on top. So we're putting them bits back into the loop basically. Yeah. Just another rotation on the bale, pulling it through, stronger knot as well, so we can actually produce heavier bales and not burst twine, you know, so that we need that strong knot to be able to produce. So very are you effectively kind of like doing like a double knot sort Correct. of thing? Yeah. Correct, yeah, double knot technology. And it's two lots of double knots as well? No, just the one. Oh, it's just one just lot. The one. Right. So the start of the bale is the double knot yeah. section because that's where you need the strength to be right. able to pack against it as such. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then are you, are you knotted again? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's a single knot at that exactly, point. Exactly, right. yeah, it finishes the bale off. Right. Yeah, correct. And in terms of like technology and control technology on this, yes. what, what, what have we got? Well, what we have coming out this year as well is the baler mode. Yeah. So, coupled to this tractor, we've got a T7 HD, and across from it, we've got a T7 300, the PLMI tractors. Um, they now come with this baler mode um, option. Right where basically it'll change or alter the fueling, cab suspension and front axle suspension of the tractor to try and ease that plunger movement yeah. of the tractor and, and more comfort basically for the operator at the end of the day. Right. So yeah. So it's literally tell, based on what the bale is doing. Yeah. It's telling the tractor's front axle suspension and the cab suspension. Right. Counteracting exactly. this direction. And it's continuously learning as it's working. So right. it's not just a, a one stop click of a button and that's yeah. it it'll continuously adapt yeah across the working day or whatever well sean thank you very much no for problem. showing us around no your problem at all big square belly good yeah. to see where they're at and where yeah. they're up to and hopefully we might catch one up in the field at yeah some definitely well. definitely good stuff Right, ladies and gents, now on to some precision farming ag chat here at the John Deere stand. And I'm pleased to say I'm now joined by Will Downey, who's yep. going to run us through it because we've got a lot to talk through, haven't you we've guys? Got a lot, yeah. You've been busy, haven't you, very, with your precision busy. ag? So yeah, we'll not yeah, hang yeah, about yeah, out yeah. here because nope. it is quite toasty and warm. Yeah. So we'll dive on in. Come on in, we've got a lot to show you of what we've got on show of precision ag at Serials 2023. So we've got a bit of a tech technical center here and we want to show you all the latest and greatest of what we've got with John Deere Precision Ag okay so firstly we start off we have got our new Starfire 7000 receiver you'll see it out in the tractors this is what we are replacing as our current model of our SF6000 right so big uh, big features we have seen change with this is we pick up a lot more satellites 
So we pick up double the amount of satellites and what our SF6000 did. So what does that mean to you as a driver? It's a lot quicker, performance is a lot better than what we've seen on our older models. Right, so how have you actually managed to do that in terms of doubling the amount of satellites? So is it just in terms of the yeah. deals you've got with certain... So previously we only picked up two satellite bases, so we picked up GPS and GLONASS. Now we pick up GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Bidu. All right. So I'm not going to bore you to death with that, but we just take in a lot more coverage. Yeah. So this is now our standard offering uh, for receivers, so big improvement in performance. Right. A lot quicker. So those that have got the 6,000 yep. receiver, is that completely gone now? You do have to step up to this? Yeah. So now, as orderable, you can only order a 7,000. Right. But those that have still got 6,000 right now, can they still continue to yeah, use Yeah, they theirs? will still continue working for the next however many years, so they are still compatible. We'll still supply parts for them and we will still supply um, service for them. Right. So this is just our new offering. That's it. Good so. stuff. So we move on from our um, receivers to what we talk about of operation centre. So a big thing around Precision Ag now is our My John Deere, our operation centre. And this is really our hub we see here about transferring data. So managing field boundaries, managing prescription maps, managing all of your actions that's going on in the farm. Okay. And a big problem we've always had uh, when we create documentation in different machines is that tractors have different information. So you'll go into one field, mm. you'll create a boundary or an AB line, and then actually your tractor comes along next, but he's got a different set of data. Yeah. So he then uses a different boundary. I'm sure you've been in that position heaps of times. <laughs> so we've now just launched a new feature which is called Data Sync. And we are really just trying to expose this off today at the show to show you how easy this is to actually use. And what Data Sync does is it is a feature which when you go into a field, make a boundary, make a guidance line, this will automatically share across your whole fleet. Right. So what, just in real time, just yeah, like that? Yeah, instant, right. instant. So it's been a game changer for us. It's a free um, service, so it is already now available in Operation Center. So providing you have got a Gen 4 display, a Starfire receiver of any type, what we call here our JD Link modem. So this is our telematics modem, which is fitted in every single John Deere uh, product which is supplied. And do we need a subscription for all this? Nope, that is all, all free. It's all free? It's all free. So we offer no subscriptions on our telematics service. Right. So this is our telematics modem, which sits in the roof of all tractors, all combines, all machines, and it is now standard equipment. And as I say, no subscriptions, no yearly fees or any of that. Right. So providing we have that, we have got our connectivity, we've got our Gen 4 display, we've got our receiver, to give us our GPS location, we can now instantly share data, okay, between all of our machines. So, as a bit of an example, I want to just show you how simple this is on this display, okay? So let's take the example here, we go into the field, okay, we go into fields and boundaries, I am the driver, I say, right, I am going into uh, a new contractor, edit this, we add a new client, okay, and today we're going to call this serials. 2023 okay so i am the driver i've gone into my field i've made the client name i go into the farm i make the farm name so this will be today test and then also i make the field name which again is also test one in this example okay so this is effectively this is kind of like the first guy going into the field yep. putting in that information yep. and then so if we take the example of a of a of a silage contractor i am going in with my triple mowers i am making the field i will then press save okay and then hit okay so i've now gone in i've made that data right so this is our mowing tractor we now go over to this other display over here okay now just imagine these as tractors they obviously are displays okay so we go back into menu applications fields and boundaries we select our client what was it serials, serials. 2023 test test one okay poof information is there simplest seamless no need for usb sticks or anything like that so we've got all the technology there okay if we then, for instance, want to do making an AB line and share that between the machines, this is why we've got a demonstration of a bit of a golf buggy I here I today. was going to ask what's this. So, <laughs> please excuse us, but all we wanted to do is show you that it is simple and easy to use. So again, we go through the same process, okay, of menu, applications, fields and boundaries, okay, we let this load up, we select our client name, which was again, Serials 2023, test, test one so all the information is shared across our fleet because we've all got the mtg fitted on this 
So we could either create a boundary now, but the example we're going to use for you is that we are going to set a track. So we've gone into the field, we want to make a new AB line. So for this example, I'm just going to use an A plus B heading. We're going to call it a test. Uh, call this test AB, just to show you. We hit OK. OK again. Set our A point, set our B point. That makes our AB line. Job done. So we are then the rake man. We're, we've made our AB line or whatever we've done. Test. Back over to this display. We go in, we make our fields and boundaries. We select our client again. So we go back to Serials 2023. We select test, select test one. Okay. Field is now loaded up. And now we want to select our AB line. So into auto track guidance. Wrong button. Set track test. There it is. That's it there. Pencil, all of your time that's been made, all of your coordinates, etc. is there. Whereas previously in a lot of people, you'll see on some farms, they'll have WhatsApp groups for sharing coordinates. Yep. So you'll set the line for your de-stoner or your deep ridger, you'll then get a picture of the coordinates there and you'll share it across the fleet. Whereas now we can do that all seamless. That's it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's cracking that. And, you know, as an example then, as we've just gone around through, you know, the mower guy could go into the field, set their AB line, yeah. the farm information. The rake guy might have been that one. Yeah. Follows that. And then even the forager, forager as well, because it's all synced up. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we've got this connectivity, so when we also talk about operation centre with doing documentation, we talk about sending work plans, so what we talked about last year of our one-click go setup yeah. file, so we can send files, jobs, two machines, they can all share the same information. Right. But purely because we're all connected on yeah. JD Link. And outside technology. of the John Deere universe, yep. if you had this equipment fitted on other colours and brands of tractors, yep. would that work as well? Yep. It all works the same. Yeah. We keep it simple at John Deere. If you want to have <laughs> this Precision Act technology, you need four things. Yeah. You need a display, you need a receiver, you need the JD Link modem, and you need operation centre. Yeah. And with that, you can put it onto any brand, and it'll work, you have the same functionality. Spot on, right, well, this isn't the only toy that we got on. No, in so here, this is, is our, um, we've talked about receivers, we've talked about connectivity, we've talked a bit about displays. We now want to talk to you about our new display. So this is our Gen 4 display. Also on the stand, we have our new G5 display, which is down here, that the customer is with. So, so this is our new, generation of um, display armrest. We have a bigger screen, we have got more resolution. Okay, so we're up to 1080p yeah. resolution on these displays. Bigger processing power, so three times the processing power of what our Gen 4 display has. We've also got more storage capacity, so turning the screen on, it's a lot quicker to boot up, all of these things. Off, it comes in two different sizes, so this is the G5 Plus, the 12 and a half inch terminal. We also have the G5, which is a 10 inch terminal. Both displays can do exactly the same thing. So they both can have the same operations, they can have the same activations, all of that sort of thing. The great thing about this display is, now in all model year 24, 6R, 7R and 8R tractors, this is going to be standard, but it also comes standard with auto track, section control and variable rate and base. So we no longer are having a tractor that is only capable of auto track. We are delivering these tractors which have got absolutely everything Fully unlocked. loaded. And if I wanted a secondary terminal in yep. the cab, could I have this one yep. as well? So this is our G5 Plus. We can also still, like we offer the Gen 4, we have a G5 Plus extender monitor. So it is the same as this and you can have a duplicate one. Swip, swap between the screens that we had up there. Right. So works well. Good stuff. Works well. Okay. Right. What, what else? Should, have you got one more toy on this stand? Is I've it got the one more is toy. It the sensing? It's sensing, yeah. Sensing. You can maybe get that vibe from, from around here. So if we maybe come around this side of the stand and we look at this um, Harvest Lab sensor here. So big push we've got today is our Harvest Lab 3000 sensor. So typically found in a lot of forage harvesters. Yeah. Guys are doing constituent sensing on these for energy, protein matter, sugar content. You've had, you've had that quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. quite a while. Yeah, that's been out Harvest yeah. Lab 2000. That was predominantly focused on forage harvesters. But we have since moved on to this, and we are now seeing it is one sensor, but it's got the four applications. Four applications being, firstly, on the forage harvester, so for measuring uh, constituents on the spouts for our um, forage quality. Secondly, we have this display here, which is our manure sensing. So this is. Uh, a new rig we have designed to show you the simplicity of how, how this works. So 
What this does is analyzing the manure on the go, so we can then look at our N, P and K values of our manure whilst it's going through the machine. Uh, linked with a flow meter, we can either alter the speed of the forward speed of the tractor depending on what rate you want to put the slurry on at or you can use it as a documentation method. Yeah. So with this, for instance, if we were spreading cattle slurry, we can measure the real-time analysis of nitrogen, phosphate and potash. We can set a, a max limit or a max target of what we want and the machine will adjust it itself. Forward speed control, um, that's what we want. So we do have a bit of a, um, a simulator on here to show you how it would look as well. So this is um, all rigged up to show you the combination of Harvest Lab, um, flow meter and also the John Deere system. Okay, so that's our third application. Fourth application which we want to uh, new for this year is our grain sensing on combines as you will see here. So we have now launched this available as retrofit on our S series and T series combines. Okay, so we can have this mounted as you see here on the clean grain elevator. What does that do for us? So this allows us to measure the protein content, the starch content, and the moisture content of grain mm. that goes through a combine. So what is the benefit of this to you? So if we're measuring protein content, we can use it in two ways. We can measure, firstly, segregation of loads. So if we're doing wheat, we can know that this load was high protein, this load was low protein. Does that mean that, well, one's gonna make milling, one's not? Mm. So we know how to segregate it. Also, we can create a yield map such as this, but for protein. So we can then analyze in our field that actually, yes, this was maybe a very high yielding area, but was the protein level good in that area? Yeah. Not so much. And it was always amazing that you think in your field, the high yielding area is actually where all the protein is going to be, but it never is. Right, it you might be locked up yeah. in another part of the field, which doesn't spot. look quite as... Exactly. Yeah. But before we unlock this, if we don't have this technology, we cannot see this insight of, of what we can get. So this can be available mounted on the combine, or as the example we've got here, it can be used as a stationary display. So in here we have got some wheat, and we can do a very basic um, sample so we can have this in our grain store and we could do a sample of this on the move. Right. So we can maybe do that quickly now. Um, so with our with our system we can start a start a new analysis. So we're using obviously our NIR sensor um, and if we were testing loads as they came in we can do real-time analysis of this and it will then give us a reading for the moisture content, the starch content and also the protein of the of the grain whilst on the move. So quite handy for guys which have maybe got it in um, in grain stores, etc., or grain trading, or want to know yeah. what it's like in the field. So yeah, there we go. You have to do Are we three. Ready? Is she you cooked? have to do three. Yeah. So there is our instant constituents of telling us it's 12.3 percent moisture, which to be honest is not too bad because milling wheat usually about 13 percent. Sorry, that's our moisture. Our crude protein is a bit low, so it's 8 percent, and then our starch 64 and a half. Yeah. So actually the quality of that grain is quite low because the, the cutoff for milling is about 13%. So there, but that's... So rather than now mixing that with your grain that could be quite good, yep. you've now got the ability to go, actually no, the that over there, game. that over there. Yep, keep it simple, keep it simple. Right. But that off. sums up our harvest lab. So one sensor, four applications, so we can use it in a stationary base, we can use it on our spout of our forage harvester, we can use it on our combine, and as we showed you over here in that rig, we can use it for manure sensing. So we've got a lot going on in this tent. I was gonna say, when it comes to precision ag, connectivity and tech. Yep. And as we say, it's all very well supplying the tractors, but we want you to yeah. make the most of the technology in the tractor. That's it, maximise them. Yeah, That's what it's all and about. the great thing about this is that a lot of this technology is already in base on your tractor. So that example we used about DataSync, for example, mm. if you've got a 2016 tractor above that with a Gen 4 display, we can do all this technology. Yeah. I was going to say, because a lot of these, all the elements of it, you've been doing them for a yeah. long time. You just keep building those building, building blocks yeah. and going up another level. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah, spot on. Good. Well, well, thank you no very problem. much for your time. Good Perfect to see you again. That. Now time for a little bit of sprayer action on the fence stand and I'm joined by Mr. Sam Treadgold who is going to talk us through their self-propelled rogator. Uh, so yeah, Sam, take us through it, front to back. Okay, well we have, um, we have three models of rogators, so we've got a 6, 4, 5, 
655 and a 665. This is a 655 we have here, it's the middle offering. This is 274 horsepower. The smallest one is 240 and the biggest one is 307. Each model is built on a single beam chassis. So no matter whether it's the smallest one or the biggest one, it's exactly the same chassis. Right, so you go for a central spine sort of a yeah, layout. Yeah, that's right. it. And from that, we can obviously change the engine, the tank size and the boom size. Um, and the wheel motors, everything else will be pretty much exactly the same. Right, so um, around that single <clears> chassis you can literally yeah, yeah, fit on what you need chassis, per model. Put on yeah. what we need and we can adjust the weight distribution and make it all so that the machine works exactly how we want right. it to. Um, so they'll all have exactly the same cab, you know, the same software, the same running, same nozzle, same booms, yeah. same tank, we're just adjusting a few little things to change whether it's a 645, 65 or 665. Right, got you. Um, with that single beam chassis, we can uh, you know, get a few advantages out of that. So we can get a nice tight turning circle of 3.14 metres. Um, we have a very good picture which we show quite a lot of people when we're trying to sell these. Is If you would sit a, a Mini Cooper or a Peugeot 206 here and do a circle around it, you would just kiss the bumpers on yeah. this corner. We can get it that tight. Height adjustment, so we have two heights, there's no in between. Um, we've got 1.2 is the highest and 0.7 is the lowest, so you've got a 50 centimetre height range, right. which we can change. I mean, so you literally just go from one to the other? You can't, yeah, yeah, you... so this is at the uh, 0.7 metres at the minute, which really, you'd probably be 80-90% of this height all year round, really, yeah. unless you're doing some high beans, rye, um, or you'll see drape, then you're jacking it up, which you right. can't do on the, go on the road anyway. And when you so. jack it up, does that affect the track <clears throat> width as well? Does that come in? No, no, that no? stays how, that how stays you set where it. it is. Because um, we can do fixed track width on all machines, but we can also add on hydraulic track width adjustment as well. So we can do 1.8 metre track width up to 2.2. So we've got plenty of range there. Right. And with the track width adjustment as well, we can have the front wheels in and the rear wheels out if we want to distribute weight a bit more yeah. if we're on slightly wetter ground. Don't run in the same yeah. tram like the same yeah. wheelings from yeah, front yeah, to back, right? Yeah, if you just want to spread the weight a bit more. Yeah. We've got independent wheel suspension. So the suspension which we have on the machines is pretty much like we have on the 8, 9, 8 and 900 series. Oh, right, so the, like a proper wishbone you know, the, yeah, and the 10 style series machines, yeah. yeah. And presumably that wishbone suspension, that's responsible for altering your height, yeah, is it? exactly. Yeah. The height and the track width adjustment, everything. Yeah, right. as you go up and down, that's all adjusting itself. Got you. And obviously, that in field, along with our boom height control and where we've got the boom mounted, gives us a really nice and stable boom yeah. control. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, speaking of like, you know, your boom mounting, am I right in thinking it kind of comes back to the centre in terms yeah. of. Yeah, so the, the boom mounting itself, the pinpoint is about here, just in front of this right. axle. So, we, so we've got it. Um, you know, as close to the middle of machine as we can. Yeah. Because uh, obviously we want it to be nice and smooth. That's it. What would you rather go across a ploughed field on, a telehandler or a forklift? <laughs> so, you know, nice analogy there. Yeah. I like that one. Real, you know. Real well, that's it. So rather than having a mast at the back and that taking all the shock of the rear axle. Yeah. You can kind of put it towards the middle and you can sort of ro rock around. Yeah, yeah. The front yeah, and rear axle. Yeah. yeah. Like a boggy sort That's of system it. on a trailer isn't it? That's it, yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah so we, we can offer tank sizes from three and a half thousand litres up to six thousand litres. On a 645 the largest tank size we can go to is five thousand and on a 655 and 665 we go up to six thousand litres. Right. 500 litre clean water tank and on a 655 and a 665 if we have an option on there which is called continuous rinse system which is basically taking out a wash cycle out of the auto rinse cycle to speed up time when we are washing down yeah then we have an extra 100 litres of water on the front oh, right. to capacitate for that and then just talk us through this area the, the induction hopper and whatnot um yeah so the induction hopper um the main um spray pump is a 785 litre a minute centrifugal pump so nice and quick um we generally see a lot of guys that unless they're filling up with liquid fur or straight water, they're, um, they can't keep up with putting chemical in All right. when we've got it at max at five. Yeah. So we have a um, five speeds. Generally, people will be filling out two or three hours, so they won't be able to keep up with putting chemical in. Right, so there you go. Quite nice and can you we've got. incorporate a pause in there as well, just a pause in the filling while you... Yeah, 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 you yeah. can pause it. So you can basically just have it recirculating yeah. if, you, if you think the water's going to overtake you and you're yeah. not get all the chemical in yeah so if you are doing liquid fur or it's been pre-mixed for you yeah you could fairly get on with yeah, this yeah thing. you can yeah. get it pumped in pretty fairly pretty get it on board and yeah, away yeah. you go um we've got a 60 litre induction hopper 
um, at 220 litres a minute intake from in there. So I think you would struggle to fill it before it's taken it away. Yeah. Anyway, or I'd hope to think so. Yeah. <laughs> Depends how That's much the plan. pouring in. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the bottom there is a jet for powders and granules. So that's 60 kilos a minute intake. Yeah. Uh, and you can obviously combine that jet at the bottom with the rinse nozzles inside the induction hopper. And then you've also got the can wash as well, which you can run the nozzles and the can wash all in one go. So you can pour out and wash out. At the all same right, time. job done. Everything you can do here on the OptiFlow panel, you can do inside the cab. Mm -hmm. So if you've filled up and you forgot to divert it from tank to boom to save you getting back out, you can just do it in the screen. Yeah. Just and same the other way around. If you want to set it ready for filling um, before you get out of the cab, you can do it all in there. Yeah. And you. We have auto fill as well, so you can either set that in there at say, I don't know, four and a half thousand litres for a job. You can have it all set up in there ready for when you get out here, you just press the tick and it will go up to that 4,500. It will slow the pump down when you get to a few hundred um, litres before that. And then once it's reached the limit, it will blast a horn and cut the pump off. And yeah. all you've got to do is turn the tap. And then, yeah, important bit, boom wise, what have you got on these? So the boom, so these are, Aluminium pommier booms, so you know, real nice and lightweight, yeah. really strong. So we can do boom sizes from 24 meters up to 39. 39 we weren't really using this country, it's more European. So we, yeah, 24 to 36 we'll say. Yeah. Um, we've got Altec hydro pneumatic nozzle bodies on there now. So we can, we can offer three, three options. The single, um, you know, five way turn nozzle body where you only have one nozzle facing down. Um, a twin line, which is where you've only got two, and then a quad body where we can show or use four, as you can see on there now. Yeah. A choice of four or six boom height sensors um, for your machine. So, you know, depending on what your ground undulates like and how, mm. how sensitive you want it, you've got options there. And we've got active roll on the center frame as well. So, um, you know, if one boom on the right hand side is going higher than the left hand side, the centre frame will turn to compensate to allow that boom to lift up and drop the other one down right. to keep that nice, you know, that nice um, stable boom. Yeah. And then engine wise, do you keep that down this side on, on these or is it up front or wherever? Yeah, so it's behind this panel yeah. here. Yeah. It's like, see, you can balance it out, can't you? Like, you got yeah, all yeah. the so induction have, stuff. So that's, on. that's hung off the chassis, so that takes away a lot of vibration yeah. and noise. I'm going to say, because you know, so it's not up there it's, it's behind your head. It's real quiet, it's yeah. obviously not behind your head, as you say. The only thing that's up there is the cool impact, but that doesn't make a lot of noise. And, you know, your air filter, um, hydraulic reservoir fill, screen wash, etc. But yeah, the engine is sat behind that guard in there, which is the Echo Power engine. Yeah. And, it, uh, you know, as you can tell, it's the weight's um, distributed nicely because we've got more water compensation and we've got the um, pump and all the plumbing on that side and then we've compensated for it on this side with the engine. Yeah. The engine. And you know, from a service point of view, you can jack it up, um, take that panel off and all your filters are there. It's all on this side. So it's all yeah. nice and easy to get to. Right. Because one brilliant thing about the, this machine as well is it's very low maintenance. There's no grease points on all the chassis. No. Or on the center frame. The only grease points you've got are on the fold up here and the brake back, which unless you're twanging the brake back a lot of times, you wouldn't need to grease too much. <laughs> but the only grease points are there above the cab yeah. where, the, where the first section folds. Right. Yeah. There's none on the centre frame, none on the chassis. They're all sealed. There you go. And then cab-wise, this looks kind of familiar from <coughs> your combines and yeah, things so like that. Yeah, you've seen that before. So that's the Cat 4 cab, which we use on the Ideal Combines as well. Um, Really comfortable and quiet. Obviously, being cap four, it pressurises the cab when you're inside there, so that you're not getting any of that chemical smell and mm. dust and pollen coming in. And it's obviously the same seat and armrest as we have in the combine as well. Obviously, with the sprayer functions that we need on yeah. there. Yeah. So you got that commonality. Yeah. So we, the... Yeah, the nice commonality. And also, if you're jumping out of a fent tractor, jumping into one of these, yeah. you're gonna be able to drive it because you're gonna be able to know how to use all the buttons and the screen and the maps and everything. That's it. It's quite so, familiar. Yeah, generally we're specking these with two screens because then you've got one for the you know the tractor function screen and the maps and everything, and then you've yeah. got another screen which you can have focused on for the spray, the spray pack, and you know what you're doing with the sprayer. Jobs are good, right? Well, Sam, thank All you right. very much for a no quick problem. walk around of the raw gator. That's so, right. absolutely spot on. That you better go and get an ice cream. I was going to say it's getting about that time, <laughs> isn't it? Possibly cider time, but <laughs> yeah, one or the other. Later, <laughs> one side of the lolly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
and gents, so final one from us today here at uh, the Serials event 2023. Unfortunately, we can't get around all the uh, various pieces of machines and technology, but hopefully this little episode has uh, given you a little flavour as to what was at the event. So we're going to finish on a high, aren't we, David? We are. So yeah. we are going to finish with Clayden. We're going to have a look at this uh, hybrid T4 uh, trailed model and I've got the new boy. I've got the new boy at Clayden. I say new boy, we've known him for donkey's years in a previous life yep. but we're now going to test Mr David Ferber's knowledge. What you've picked up in the last three, three months, months about Clayden machines. So no pressure. No pressure. So Perhaps we'll have to phone a friend. You, never you know, might have to phone a friend. We might go 50-50 on some of these. Yeah. <laughs> so right here we go. Last one of today. So David talk us through the hybrid T4, what we yeah, got? Yeah, so good afternoon everybody and um, welcome to the Claydon stand. So yeah, the Claydon hybrid drill. I mean, Claydon do the hybrid um, drills and the Evolution mounted drills. And just really to say the heart of the drill um, with Claydon is the leading tine arrangement here. So basically we have this leading tine, we can go in more detail just around the side, but the leading tine is to um, create a substructure to work under the seeding zone and create what we call like a T piece, so some um, a subsoil aeration, yeah. um, create a way for the A share behind. So loosening the soil, loosening the soil structure into an already existing seed bed. Okay, yeah. Um, so literally just working the root zone, the only bit you want to do. Zone, so this yeah. is all, this is the strip till concept. Yeah, strip -till. In a nutshell, this is it, this is what it's all about. This yeah. is what it's all about. Right. Uh, so yeah, so you you really do have to do minimal cultivations, mm. but the great thing of the Claydon system, we are introducing some air into the system, some soil movement, not a massive amount, like you said, it's 300 mil, roughly, depending on the working width yeah. of row spacing between the front and rear tines. Yeah. And you can see here, there's quite a large distance. I'm going to say, it's a long distance from yeah. front to back though, isn't it? I mean, between the front row of, you know, yeah, tines the, and the back. I mean, obviously slightly different on the hybrid, the trailed range to the, the mounted range, which is shorter and compact, but it is all about trash flow and clearance. Yeah. And talking about trash flow and clearance, um, now, and we also do an option on the mounted drill, we have these cutting discs right. at the front here. And are these an option on the trails as well, or would these be standard on trails? Well, they're standard on the trail right. today. Got we you. used to have press wheels in the front, you could still take the press wheels, yeah. but let's be honest, everybody's going now with the way that we're looking to drilling into trashier seed beds, yeah. cover crops. People are going to the cutting discs, so their job is to cut through any crop, any residue, cr create a slice in the top for the leading tine to work. Just to work into Just and not get any trash wrapped around those, that That's leading tine. Right. You've got it. The leading tine generally depends on the crop you're mm. actually drilling but generally working two inches deeper than the a share. Okay. So, so to create in a zone, a drainage um, in, in the seeding zone. Right, so for more seal crops, you'll be about, like I say, two to three inch deeper than yeah. the actual, the, the share at the back, share the seeding back. share, yeah. Right. Maybe for rape, a deeper rooting structure, you'd go deeper yeah. to create more of a, a seeding zone, more of a breakage in the soil to get the root structure, right. to, to get a good strong root structure. Or would you go for a narrower share with oil seed rate, it's maybe? It's a good point, actually, yeah. to bring up there. Um, James, yeah, I mean, you can go for, this is a standard seven inch A share, and the seeding boot here will put a, a seed on the shelf each side. Right. So it's stripped till roughly, you know, the seven inch width there. Yeah. But you could come down to a three inch A share for rape. All right, yeah. yeah. Um, just to get a narrower band, more Yeah, a bit more, con yeah, yeah. more concentrated, yeah. And some people would even consider perhaps shutting off one row and going to 600 mil. Or yeah. e equally, you know, use the last of your A shares, at least before say. replacing them, you know, a worn A share yeah. for your rape seed and then replace, your, replace your A shares. Right. So that's it, just get a bit more out of that life. That's it, yeah. And get the rape seed rate banged That's, that's right, it. There you go. So, yeah, so, so that's sort of the, the um, seeding zone. Um, they're shear bolt protected leading tines, or is this version here, it's got what we call Stone Pro on, which is an auto reset um, hydraulic accumulator. Right. which basically protects the leading time. Yeah. But we also do a shear bolt version, which yeah. is still very common. Depth is controlled across the entire width of the drill on your wheels. And slightly different with a trail drill, um, these centre wheels carry the actual trail drill on the road. So they carry the main frame and they carry the frame and the tank during um, seeding. Right. Um, and then 
the other three wheels here and in the middle on the far end carry the frame of the drill for, for, for your depth control. Okay, so, so we get, split you, the weight. Right, got you. So right. not to get too much compaction. Ah, there. I see. And as you can see, any wheel is not compressing after a seeding zone. Right. So it's always in front of the next leading tie. Got you, so whatever compaction that may make, it's taken out straight away yeah. by that one yeah. behind it. Yeah, you got it. And then just followed up by um, the metal paddle boards, which are actually spaced between the rows. They're actually, um, because of the leading tie and the A share, you will, you know, drilling at eight to 12 kilometers per hour, create some boiling of the soil. Hmm. These will ensure that it's filled back in in the center. So pushing down the soil, pushing into the center, and then the following hour on the rear just to get a good level in. Yeah. And we would, if conditions allow, we would say, you know, after a day, after the, after the conditions are right, um, and the soil's hazed, then roll. Right. Roll after drilling. Yeah. Uh, only if the conditions are right. But a very flexible drilling system. That's it. Well, speaking of flexibility, talk us through tank options. Yeah, tank what options. You got one up so, there? yeah, so this is a, a grain and fertilizer drill, 3,900 litres, split 60 40. So, we've got two distribution heads. So, we've got one for grain and one for fertilizer. Or alternatively, you could put two seed mixes in. Okay, yeah. And interestingly, on, on this, we have a separate distribution head. Um, for example, for slug pellets. Right, so that's the third one, that little that's, one at the yeah. back, right? So there's a separate, on the other side of the drill, yeah. which you'll see in a minute, there's a separate seeding unit, metering system, so you could do slug pellets or a different seed variety. Yeah. So plenty of options there for, for drilling. So you can really mix and match, can't you? You can, yeah. And then you've got some complementary sort of in implements that kind of go with your whole yeah, sort of system. system. That's yeah. it, the Opti-Till system, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, really part of the principle, I mean, I, I know in different areas, different um, ways, some people remove the straw, a lot of people chop the straw and leave it on the mm. ground. Um, but part of the, one of the key elements of this is the straw harrow. Yeah. So we do straw harrows from three metres to 15 metres. 15? 15. So oh, that's right. so nice. You can cover some ground, you know. Oh, really, so you get on there, right? Yeah, you, you, you really <laughs> get on then. This is seven and a half metre, most common selling one. Yeah. We do a nine metre in a mounted folding as well. And this, just following the combine, Get in there with a straw harrow. It's quite a high-speed operation. Just create a tillering on the top. Mm. Spread the straw around. Don't pick it up at the headless. We need to keep a neat, nice, even spread. Right. Okay. And just improve that straw to soil contact. Yeah. Um, helps the, the, the degrading process, contact with the worms. It helps chitting of the weed seeds. Yeah. Just getting everything going, isn't Get it? Getting everything almost? going. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of a tilt. Then you could take them out when it's the first chip. So you can take out the weed seeds with that. So you can have a run through again with that? Yeah, you can have that. a run through again with right. that. And, you know, it's so fuel efficient, you know, it's not only working in the top. Yeah. You perhaps do at least two, if not a third um, um, application with a straw rake. Would you go thought, different directions as well? Yeah, yeah. it'd be good to just go yeah. in a different direction. Right. And there you can just see a graphic form of the leading Asia. Yeah, so there it is, that's the, yeah. the heart of that's the, heart the of Claydon it. drill, isn't it? That's yeah, the heart of the Claydon drill. So right. your leading time, creating your T structure you'll see here. So, you know, it's very much breaking down into the subsoil, creating the aeration. So you've, you're actually drilling between your existing root structure so it can always absorb water. We all yeah. see that, don't we? A, a root structure always takes water away. That's it. And it also can hold water and absorb a lot of water. Get a good, strong root structure, seed on the tea, sh tea shelf, and you've got a nice friable um, seeding zone there for good germination. So yeah, I'm glad you saved the best to last. And <laughs> <laughs> Spawn, well, dearie. Okay, good thank to see Thank you very much good for that. Good to see you, James, again. And thank you to you guys for watching. As ever, go check out that there, landpowertv.com, for loads more reviews and customer reviews and show and event coverage such as this. And as ever, we shall catch you again next time. Thanks for watching.